thanks very much, Julie, and uh, yeah, welcome everyone. Um, so just before I start, I'll just give a very brief uh, uh, bit of information about my background. So my background's in the sport of gymnastics to Olympic level as a gymnast and a coach. Um, some years ago, I became interested in um, transferable skills that may, may be taught to um, jockeys and riders in equestrian sports to um, um, reduce injury risk and in falls. Obviously, we know that uh, you know that's one of the main risks that uh, riders have in equestrian sports. So that became an area of interest for me, and I've been um, doing some uh, training work for riders in Australia over the last uh, four or five years. Uh, two years ago, I enrolled in a PhD at the University of Sydney. Uh, the uh, Faculty of Exercise or Health Sciences and the Discipline of Exercise and Sports Science. Um, and that's in this same subject matter, which is jockey and rider safety. So what I'm going to be talking about uh, in this webinar um, is the second study uh, of the PhD thesis. Um, and that's on the characteristics of rider falls in cross country eventing. Um, and it's a video observational study. So firstly, I'd just like to acknowledge and thank um, some organisations and individuals who collaborated and provided videos. We, the study couldn't have been done without video footage of falls and um, particularly, I'll, so I'll thank these people, which is uh, Dr. Stephen Pickett from the Medical Equestrian so Association in the UK uh, and Nathalie Discarn from the FEI, Jonathan Clissold, British Eventing and Paul Tapner from Event Rider Masters. So um, very, very, um, good of these organisations and individuals to provide the footage for the study and also Melbourne Racing Club at Mornington uh, who provided their meeting facilities for an expert panel work workshop and I'd particularly like to thank the expert panel members Dr Andrew McLean, his brother Jonathan McLean, Wendy Christensen and Matt Ryan um, who kindly <coughs> um, gave two days of their time to um, assist with, uh, with the workshop and the study so thank you very much to all of those um, people who supported the study. Okay, so um, firstly, why, why study falls? Well, the first reason is uh, to understand why riders fall, which is of course to help prevent them. Um, but the second reason how riders fall hasn't been researched in detail. So it's also an important area to be able to re reduce injury risk in falls. Uh, did you know that gymnastic coaches as a part of gymnast preparation teach skills including safe landings, body preparation for high impact landings, rolling skills, how to land from height and body shaping exercises. The reason for teaching these skills is because of a very important safety principle and that is in gymnastics before we take them up we have to teach them how to come down. Now I'm sure you do know that people who ride horses will sometimes fall or be thrown off um, and when it does happen, how the rider impacts the ground may be the difference between walking away or a more serious injury. So the reason we need to study how riders fall is to identify skills and behaviours to reduce what is a known injury risk. So video analysis is a useful training tool in many sports, including equestrian sports, to assess riding skills and practices. The aim of this study was to identify potential or potentially modifiable factors to reduce injury risk in falls. It's important to understand more clearly the nature of falls and the biomechanics of how riders fall. So the objective of this study was to describe the characteristics of falls in cross-country eventing and investigate relationships between fall variables and high-risk landings. The first part of the project was to develop a protocol for systematically capturing data on falls from video observation using a fall assessment instrument that can be used to answer research questions with a higher degree of reliability than viewing videos in an informal or non-systematic way. This included identifying variables to be analysed, of which there were approximately 90, and documenting the observational criteria. Diagrams were used where possible. This is, this is an example of horse fall direction. And this is an example of, here, an example of rider fall direction in the top diagram, prone landing and the next one sideways. There were five landing directions that were um, where we coded data on in, in total. 
an Excel template was developed with algorithms to check data integrity and save the data uh, and to reset the template after each fall was analysed. The protocol was tested and refined with the assistance of the expert panel who met over two days and a sample of videos were reviewed and evaluated and the workshop enabled refinement of the fall assessment instrument and protocol. Some initial data collection was also carried out uh, during the uh, two day workshop. So the input factors investigated included time variables to calculate fall time, also included competition factors, including event, eventing level, short or long format competition, maximum jump height, jump types, approach angle and approach slope. The horse related factors included the horse approach speed, the nature of the problem, such as the horse impacting the jump, whether or not the horse fell and how the horse fell, such as a rotational fall. For rider related factors, rider gender was added and data for this was obtained following the workshop and air jacket usage and timing of air jacket inflation was recorded. What the rider did with the reins before ground impact and whether the rider's feet come out of the stirrups were also recorded. Other rider variables included fall direction, rider body shape, the body area impacted and muscle tension. Uh, muscle tension is an interesting one, um, which we work on often in gymnastics. Uh, so muscle tension was assessed by observing any change in body shape as a result of the forces acting upon the rider during the fall. The outcome of interest in this study was high risk landings. Now high risk landings were categorized firstly by how the rider impacted the ground, which included head impact, any hyperextension or excessive lateral flexion of the spine. And secondly, where there was a potential impact from a horse or the horse rolled onto or over the rider, or where there was no horse fall on the rider ended up going under their horse. Now actual injury outcomes data was not available for this study. So high risk landings where the rider was not injured, injured can be considered near misses. So high risk landing is an indicator of a fall where there's a high probability of injury. It doesn't necessarily mean the rider got injured. Um, in relation to head injury risk, a study published by the American College of Sports Medicine in January this year, just last month, reported that 30 million Americans participate in equestrian sports. Now that's more than the entire population of Australia. I think it's about 20% more actually. Um, now data from the US National Trauma Data Bank on adult sports related traumatic brain injuries and concussion, which was used for this study, found that 45% of all traumatic brain injuries and concussion were from equestrian sports and mostly due to falls. So I think that gives you a bit of an indication of uh, one of the big areas for risk mitigation. And you can see a reference on that screen there if anyone's interested in reading that study. So following the workshop, the data collection instrument was used to review 87 videos for cross country falls in the UK between 2015 and 2019. Data collection analysis included statistics to describe the number and percentage of falls for each variable. Also, we did univariable analysis to identify relationships between various factors and high risk landings. And finally, multivariable regression was used to examine factors that were independently associated with high risk landings. I'll explain that more shortly. Okay, so fall time was calculated by recording the frame number at the point where the rider was in a position from which they couldn't recover to the frame number where they impacted the ground and downward momentum finished. Now for the results. So fall times were normally distributed, you can see that bell-shaped curve there on the screen, ranging from just under half a second to just over a second. The average fall time was approximately three quarters of a second with a standard deviation of a quarter of a second. So this means that most falls were between half a second and one second. Now there was a separate uh, video analysis study on racing falls that, that was carried out and uh, an analysis of variance found there was no significant difference between fall times in racing and cross country eventing. Uh, fall time, sorry there, uh, fall time is mostly a function of the height of the fall and not related to the horizontal speed of travel. 
because of the large number of variables, I'm just going to show a few of the key ones. Uh, firstly, the number of percentages for falls, not for high-risk landings. There were five fall directions, as I mentioned a bit earlier. 32% of the falls were backwards, which surprised me a bit. I was expecting that number to be um, a bit less than that. 23% of falls were feet first. 23% of riders landed sideways, followed by 14% in a head first direction, and 8% were prone. In 36% of the falls, the rider gender was male, and in 64%, female. Now, the study didn't have data for the number of starters, so we don't know if there's any difference in fall risk by gender uh, from the data available in this study, that is. Uh, air jacket usage. So in 75% of the falls, the rider was wearing an air jacket. The breakdown of air jacket usage by gender shows 61% of male riders wore air jackets and 82% of female riders wore air jackets. So females were more likely to wear an air jacket. Another interesting finding was that in 25% of the falls with air jacket usage, the jacket inflated during or after the rider's torso impacted the ground. But I might also add with that, that most cases, not all, but most of the cases of late inflation, uh, both the horse and the rider were falling together, which is uh, probably the, the, the logical explanation as to why that, that uh, was the case. Okay, so now for the fall outcomes. Um, 87 videos analysed uh, were all falls, so the study didn't look at riders who fell compared to those who didn't fall. The objective was to look at the differences between falls that are low risk, meaning there was a low probability of injury, compared to falls which had a higher probability of injury, and these were the high risk landings. There were 42 cases of high risk landing where the rider's head impacted the ground which was approximately half of the fall cases. There were 12 cases where the rider ended up under their horse in some way, but only in one of these cases, the horse fell directly onto the rider. There was one case of neck hyperextension and one of neck lateral flexion. Um, as I mentioned previously, a similar study was carried out on racing falls. The results of the racing study found a higher percentage of high risk landings, both with head impacts and with the jockey going under either their own horse or another horse. So head impacts were proportionally higher in flat racing than in jumps racing. So we know that flat racing uh, takes place at a high, higher speeds than jumps racing. Um, so the speed of travel appears to be a significant risk factor for head impact in rider falls. Um, now let's look at the variables associated with high risk landing. So the first column is a chi-square value. Now a higher chi-square value means that the association is greater. Uh, the p-value of less than 0.05 was deemed to be significant. And this means there's a 95% probability an association exists between the variables. It's not due to chance, but it doesn't mean that one causes the other. A uh, significant reduced risk of high risk landing is highlighted in green and significant increased risk is highlighted in red. Decreased fall time was correlated with an increase in the number of high risk landings. So fall time is greater for riders who landed feet first and fall time also related to the fall direction. There was an increase, there was an increased risk of high risk landing at two star level and above. So for the horse related factors, lower horse speed was strongly associated with reduced risk. Sudden velocity change was also associated with reduced risk. Now velocity change means either a change in speed or a change in direction. This study only investigated the nature of fall, so it doesn't mean that sudden velocity change reduces fall risk. Bad stride or takeoff was associated with increased risk and horse refusal or run out was associated with reduced risk. Horse travel direction forwards at the point of rider fall commencement compared to sideways was associated with increased risk and a horse fall or the horse impact in the jump were both associated with increased risk. A collinearity, now this means there's also a correlation between the input variables with some of the input variables being associated with other input variables. Some examples of this include sudden velocity change being associated with horse refusal or run out 
and bad stride or takeoff being associated with higher horse speed. Um, for the rider related factors, rider muscle tension upon landing and after landing was associated with reduced high risk landing. Female riders had increased risk. Riders who wore an air jacket had increased risk and hanging onto the reins was also associated with increased risk. Now female riders were more likely to land in a relaxed body posture. There was also a correlation there. And female riders were also uh, more likely to wear an air jacket, which was up on a previous slide. Now, variables that were correlated with high-risk landings were examined for possible inclusion in a multivariable model. A um, bit technical, but I'll, I'll get through this quickly. Best subsets regression is a method that allows us to look at the comp combined effect of all variables that were late related to high-risk landings and select those that explain the most variation in the number of high-risk landings and are not collinear or related to other input variables. For example, sudden velocity change and horse refusal run out were both correlated with high-risk landing and also correlated with each other. So best subsets regret regression will limit the number of input variables to the ones that independently explain that variation. The final step in the analysis involved using binary logistic regression to examine the independent effect of these, that these variables had on high-risk landings. The ones that factored into the multivariable model were horse sudden velocity change reduced the risk of high-risk landing. Uh, now this was also related to horse refusal run out. It's, all, it's important to note that because the study did not have data on starters, we don't know what effect that sudden a change in speed or direction had on the number of falls. What it does suggest though, is that a fall from a horse that runs out carries a lower risk of injury than a fall where the horse attempts to jump with bad striding or take off and hits the jump. Rider muscle tension relates to how riders fall. And this suggests that riders who are able to more actively respond in a fall are in a better position than riders who relax their body posture. Riders who wore an air jacket had increased risk and rider fall time increased the risk, or, uh, sorry, reduced rider fall time increased the risk, I might say. Uh, lower approach speed resulted in a reduced number of high risk landings. Uh, one final thing here, it's important to note that the gender of the rider didn't factor into the final predictive model. In other words, the increase in high risk landings by female riders was explained by the other variables. So this suggests that gender of the rider isn't an inherent risk factor, which is good news. Okay, so there are some important implications for safety from the preliminary findings of this study. Firstly, I'm not an expert in cross-country course design. However, if it were possible to design all jumps to enable a horse to run out when their approach is not optimal, it may reduce the number of more serious fall outcomes. Obviously, we want to reduce horse impact in the jump. Another implication, rider training and how to maintain muscle tension to better enable tuck and roll is a suggested strategy for reducing the risk of injury and falls. The association between air jacket usage and high risk landing needs to be further investigated. There are big variations in design characteristics for different brands and models, such as inwards or outward inflation, uh, lanyard pull forces to inflate the jacket can vary considerably. This was identified in a Swiss study. And area of anatomy covered also varies. Now the current available data doesn't allow us to conclude that air jackets are a cause of increased risk of injury. But the association must either be related to air jacket design characteristics or potentially related to cohort differences in the riders who wear them. Or it could be, of course, a combination of both factors. Now, this is an area for improved safety because even if air jackets are not the cause of the problem and it was due to rider factors, we really need to know what those factors are that may be increasing the risk. And the only way we can answer these questions is by collecting additional data. The data also suggests that approach speed and correct striding and takeoff are very important factors for rider safety.
Okay, a couple of other observations. Um, so video analysis is a very useful tool and could be used to identify um, reasons why riders fall by comparing horse and riders who demonstrate good technique from those who don't and obviously obtaining additional data on how riders fall can, could reduce uh, fall injury risk. To achieve this, it's suggested that jumps be videoed from both the approach and landing side. There were many falls that couldn't be included in this study because the rider position was obscured or not clear. It would be useful if distance markers were added because this would allow for a more objective measure of approach speed and striding. And these factors appear to be very important safety issues. Now, I recently further reviewed the racing video footage and found that lateral head impacts were much more prevalent than expected. Uh, it was roughly 50% of falls where the jockey's head impacted laterally. Now, research carried out on head impact direction indicates that impact to the side of the head will result in more serious injury to the brain than other directions. This may have some important implications for improved helmet design. While there's plenty of evidence which demonstrates reduced head injury risk with helmet usage, we know that helmets cannot prevent all traumatic brain injury and concussion. So to reduce blunt force trauma, which is a major cause of catastrophic injury in riders, we need to increase the stopping distance when the rider impacts the ground. A final point is that the data from this and the racing video analysis suggests that teaching riders how to fall more safely may reduce injury risk. So I'd like to pose a question for your consideration. If a rider finds themselves in this position after their horse impacts a jump, will fall safety training reduce the risk of injury? Now this is an important question and one that needs to be answered. Okay, that might have been rather quick. If you blink, you might have missed it. Um, so um, I've included a sequence diagram in, in the presentation there so you can see the sequence of, uh, of the landing technique there. Finally, um, right, so uh, the final study in this PhD is a training intervention to investigate the effects of fall safety training on injury severity and falls, as well as obtaining data on anthropometric fitness measures and PPE characteristics. The research has been carried out by an international multidisciplinary research team, which you can see there on the screen. Um, if eventers were included in this study, it should enable us to collect valuable data on rider characteristics, possibly identify any cohort differences in riders who wear air jackets, which we think is very important. Uh, or very important data to collect. Um, and I'd like to uh, finally just thank uh, our uh, friends in Ireland for their financial support of this research. Um, discussions have been taking place here in Australia with Pony Club New South Wales and also the Canberra Racing Club. So I'd thank uh, those parties for their initial interest and uh, possibly or hopefully we can include local riders in this study. It certainly would be helpful um, if industry bodies in Australia would like to support this clinical trial so we can answer some important questions for rider safety. Um, if we're going to become leaders in safety, we really need to become leaders in the area of research and development. Um, so that really ends my presentation. I'd like to you know, thank you all for listening. Um, and now I'll just hand back to Julie uh, just to see if there are any questions that uh, people might have that um, we need to answer or alternatively there's the uh, my contact details there if anyone uh, wishes to make contact so thanks Julie I'll hand back to you